Here is another input-output application. Mark works at the local restaurant. He gets paid a weekly salary of $200 plus 10% of the total food sales he makes that week. Let the input T be the total dollars worth of Mark's food sales in a week. Let the output E be his total earnings in a week. Complete the input-output table below and write an equation that represents the input-output rule using the given variables. So these are all examples of amounts of food that he could sell. $2,000 worth, $2,200 worth, $2,400 worth, and $2,600 worth, amongst many, many other possibilities. So we want to find out how much he would earn. So if he sold $2,000 worth of food, he gets $200 worth no matter what. That's his weekly salary. Plus, he gets 10% of however much he sold. So add on 10% is 0 0.10 times of the 2,000. 10% 10 of 2,000 is $200. $200 plus $200 is $400. So if he sold $2,000 or $2, worth of food, he'd make $400 that week. What if he sold $2,200 worth of food that week? Well, he'd get paid the $200 again, plus he'd get 10% of the $2,200 worth of food sales. And 10% of $2,200 is $220. $220 plus $200 is $420. And if you go about the computation in the same way, you'd see you get $440 here and $460 earnings if he sells $2,600 worth of food. Notice with this input-output table that I included a column for ordered pairs. I want to write down these ordered pairs. Now notice I didn't say whether it was T comma E or E comma T. Which one would it be? Well, the input is T and the output is E. Our ordered pairs are always the form input comma output. So that means it's got to be T comma E in that order. So for the first one, we've got 2000 comma 400. The next one, we've got 2200 comma 420. The next one's 2400 comma 440. And the next one is 2600 comma 460. So the order is essential with ordered pairs. Let's say for the first one, you accidentally wrote 400 comma 2000. What that would mean to me is that he sold $400 worth of food and he got paid $2,000. That sounds crazy. There's no way he's going to get paid more than what he sold. So the order absolutely matters. In general, it's always the input, comma, the output. And of course, always put the parentheses around here to let us know that you're talking about an input-output relationship. So we represented the input-output rule as a ta in table form. Let's now do it in equation form. So we need to generalize this idea here, what we did with these computations. So our amount of total earnings E is equal to well, and no matter what, he gets paid that $200 first. Then he adds on, he gets 10%, that's in all the computations, of this number right here is the amount T. Here's an example of the amount T. So we're going to multiply the 10% by T. So this is our input-output rule, and notice the input-output rule uses the appropriate variables. I did not change that to X and this to Y. X and Y are not defined here, it's T and E. So the output E is equal to 200 plus 10% of T. We now have the input-output relationship represented numerically in table form and symbolically in equation form. Let's now take a look at it graphically. Here again is the table we just created on the previous screen. Let's now look at the rule graphically, and then we have an additional question here that we wanna answer. Notice here, that we have just quadrant one, and the reason we're only using quadrant one is because the inputs are strictly positive and the outputs are also strictly positive. So our input axis, which is always the horizontal one, is going to be our T axis in this case, and our vertical axis is going to be our E axis because those are our outputs. Don't forget that the origin right here has input zero and output zero. Can't change that. And now, our input values that we have in our table are 2,000 up to 2,600, and notice they're jumping up by 200s. So it's probably a good idea to count by 200s, but 
If we counted by 200 and started here at 200, we'd have 200, 400, 600, 800, 1,000, 1,200, 1,400, 1,600, 1,800, 2,000, and we'd be going off the chart here to be able to accommodate 2,200 all the way up to 2,600. So what do you do if you want to count by a specific number, and it makes sense to count by 200s because these are all 200 apart, but we don't want to start at 200 right here. Well, you can start at whatever your number you want as long as you put in a break. So we're going to start right here at 2000. The next one's 2200. And we could do that right here on this next one. Or if you want to, as long as you do it consistently, let's skip uh, two spaces since there's only four numbers we have to worry about here. So we'll put 2200 here, 2400 over there, and 2600 here. For the vertical axis, we have from 400 up to 460. Now, think about this. You could do 100, 200, 300, 400, 500, but then things are going to be really grouped together very closely. So it's not a very good scale. Look at how they're changing. They're changing by 20. So we want to count by 20, but we don't want to start at 20. If we did, this would be 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, 120, 140, 160, 180, 200, 220, and we're still nowhere near up to the 400s. So again, you can start right here at 400 if you'd like, so long as you put in a break. If you didn't put in the break, that would mean you'd have to put 800 here, 1200 here, and that's way too big of a number for us. So we want to count by 20s, but we don't want to start at 20. We want to start at 400. So I put my 400 there and put a break in. And now I'll count by 20s. So I've got 420, 440, 460 is as far as we went in this particular case. Now let's plot our points. We've got 2000 comma 400. We've got 2200 comma 420. We've got 2400 comma 440, and we've got 2600 comma 460. Now, in this case, it pretty much makes sense to connect the dots because technically he could sell, for example, $2,079.34. So we're going to connect the dots with a solid line here. And in this case, notice again, it's a perfectly straight line. So that means the rule E equals 200 plus 0.10t is a linear rule. It creates a perfectly straight line. Now, notice here that I did not keep drawing back this way. I don't want to go below this one or to the left of this one. So I'm just going to stop here. I can continue to draw this this way if I'd like, because he technically could sell more money's worth of food. Now that we've completed the graphical version of the input-output rule, Let's answer this question. What's the meaning of the ordered pair 0, 200 in the context of the application? Make sure you address this in the context of the application, meaning don't say that the 0 is the input and 200 is the output. Remember, say it with respect to what those things mean. So in this case, the input, if that were 0, that means that he's sold no food. He sold no dollars worth of food. And then that 200 would mean he still makes that $200 because that's his base pay. Again, when you're interpreting the meaning of an ordered pair with respect to an application, you can always write the statement in if-then form. So if he sells $0 worth of food, then he makes $200. Now, in this particular case, he actually did get paid more than what he sold. But if this were to continue very long, the company would not stay in business since they're not making any money.